Good evening and thank you for joining us for Kremlin News at 11 tonight. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Let's get started and we begin with some breaking news tonight. Spokane Valley police searching for a man who they say was behind a bloody attack at an apartment complex in East Central Spokane. Kremlin News' Kyle Simchuk has been on the scene tonight getting the latest information. We've been talking to a lot of people who live at the Loma Vista apartments, many of them shaken after seeing this man covered in blood, desperate to get some help. Police were called to the apartments around six tonight. Spokane Valley police say the victim lives here. Two men entered his apartment to get some belongings. Police say when the victim went to grab those items, one of the men started attacking him, hitting him in the head with some type of tool. Police say possibly a hammer. The two men took off, leaving the injured victim behind. It turns out paramedics were already on scene responding to an unrelated call. Kevin Downey told us he called 911 when his friend started having a medical emergency. Paramedics checked out his friend and they were about to leave when the victim came out of another apartment covered in blood looking for help. He looked pretty hurt. Um, the, the neighbor just said, hey, there's somebody really hurt on the back of the ambulance. And uh, the, the, it was just a miracle. The ambulance is right there. He was sitting on the back of it. Uh, and the paramedics were just right there, so I, I really hope he lives. Paramedics rushed the man to the hospital. Meanwhile, Spokane Valley Police and Sheriff's deputies surrounded the property searching for those two men. We saw the sheriff's helicopter circling overhead and deputies along with a canine team walking around. Police tell us they're trying to get more information on the suspect and the other man he was with. We still don't know their connection to the victim. And right now, major crimes detectives, they are on scene getting a search warrant to enter the victim's apartment to gather some more evidence. We don't know the extent of that man's injuries or his condition at this hour. Reporting in East Central Spokane, Kyle Simchuk, Krem 2 News. As part of our Boomtown coverage, we are tracking growth in the Inland Northwest, but that growth means homelessness, homelessness rather, has also gotten worse. Right now, plans are moving forward in Spokane for a new homeless shelter out on East Trent Avenue, but some are questioning if it's the best way to tackle the problem. Meanwhile, businesses say they are suffering, and they say they're worried that we are headed for the same problems Seattle has already experienced. So our Whitney Ward made the trip to Seattle to see firsthand what's working and what isn't. It's hard not to see the crisis that is homelessness in Seattle. It's along the freeways, under bridges, and camped out on city sidewalks. As housing prices have just gotten even more out of control, more and more people are homeless, you know, people are being left outside. So to move people inside and off the streets, one program is finding big success in a small package. Lehigh is Seattle's low income housing institute. Five and a half years ago, the nonprofit put up two tiny homes for a pair of homeless veterans. The concept has since grown to more than 700 tiny homes in 17 villages across the Puget Sound area. This is actually one of the newer tiny home villages. We're here in the University District of Seattle. I'm told there used to be a rather large tent encampment in this same area, but this has now replaced it. And as you can see, there's blackout fencing along the sidewalk. It would be very easy to walk on by and not even know what's inside. What did you know about a tiny home village before? Um, I knew that they were here and that they were a place to sleep. Um, and I've learned that there are a lot more than that. And they have like all the tiny homes on one side. Belki Caicedo has been homeless once before, and she spent time at some of Seattle's biggest shelters. But for the last month and a half, she has lived here in this tiny home community called Rosie's Village. Where would you have been if you didn't have this as an option? In the tent outside. Would you really? Yeah. Where would you have gone? Uh, probably under a bridge, uh, you know, an abandoned house, a porch. It became really clear that we needed to do something that would um, be quicker, less expensive, and find a way to protect vulnerable people who are um, unsheltered or living on the streets. Sharon Lee is the executive director at Lehigh. She says it's not just about putting a roof over someone's head. Every tiny home village also has 24-7 staffing, indoor laundry, kitchens and bathrooms, and access to services like job counseling and physical and mental health providers. What makes the tiny home village a better idea than a shelter? People are able to recover much more quickly over the trauma of being homeless. So we help them with um, getting their IDs, 
filling out housing applications, filling out employment applications. Last year, 56% um, of the people who um, exited a village got into um, housing. So is it meant to be kind of the stepping stone into permanent housing? Absolutely. It's like a bridge to housing. We have some people that stay only a few weeks. Other people may stay um, three to six months. It has also helped solve the problem of shelter resistance, offering individual privacy, a locking door, and the ability for families or couples to stay together. This is Pinky. They even allow pets. Everyone thinks, oh, why don't you just buy one big tent and put everybody under one big tent? But then you're just asking for trouble. And are you also potentially still going to be faced with the issue of people who just won't go to a shelter. That's right. So there are um, vacancies in many of the congregate shelters and, and it's very frustrating. And so people refuse to go. They'll rather just move to another sidewalk, move into another park. And so you haven't, you haven't addressed that you're ending their homelessness, right? You're just like sweeping them to another location. It is one of the most persistent challenges homeless advocates face. And I couldn't tell if you were describing Seattle or, or Spokane. Sarah Rankin is a professor at Seattle University's School of Law. She's been researching homelessness since the city declared it a state of emergency in 2015. You've said in the past that shelters, the big, you know, 100, 200 bed shelters are one of the least effective tools available to cities. Yeah. Do you still agree with that? Yes, absolutely. Um, congregate shelters are, have been studied repeatedly. They have very poor um, performance rates in terms of making sure that people are exiting to some, something positive, right? Placements to permanent housing. It's why she says cities like Spokane need to start focusing more on short-term alternatives as well as long-term housing. Well, affordable housing is a big issue. Uh, and that is increasingly becoming a problem in places like Spokane and other desirable communities um, throughout the state. What do you think a city like Spokane can learn from Seattle's experience so far? Everybody has to slow down and realize that um, even if we have different ideas about how to go about this, we have to start from the page that this is a shared problem. Everyone wants homelessness to get better. And the way that that first happens is by seeing everybody at the table as a potential partner in, in making that happen. That is not something um, that happens in Seattle politics. There's a lot of fighting and posturing. But Rankin says there are cities who are figuring it out, like Austin, San Diego, and Houston. And she says Spokane can do the same by learning where others have failed. During our visit here, we spoke with a number of people who are currently experiencing homelessness. And just like in Spokane, many of them are camped out in places like this. This is DOT property. It is right along the side of the freeway. And many of the people who are living here say they feel like it's the only place they can go. They didn't want to talk on camera, but they did tell us that if given a choice of going to a nearby homeless shelter or spending their nights in a tent, they will choose to spend their nights in a tent. And that's why advocates say there is not going to be a quick fix here. Instead, it's going to take a number of long-term solutions to truly fix this problem. In Seattle, Whitney Ward, Creme 2 News. Part two of Whitney's story airs tomorrow night right here on Creme 2 News at six o'clock. In the meantime, we'll take a turn to weather because today, not as windy as yesterday, but much cooler as well. Let's get outside at Chief Meteorologist Jeremy Lagoo. Jeremy, it is Friday Eve, my friend. What's in store for the weekend? Warmer temperatures, Mark. I'll take it. We start our weekend warm up tomorrow and it's not going to feel much warmer, but hey, we're going to start it nonetheless. 44 degrees outside right now. Winds out of the west southwest at seven miles per hour, so things are calming down. When it comes to today, average high is supposed to be about 68. We topped out in the mid 50s. We were down in the 30s this morning, and that's about 10 degrees colder than where we should be, and we're heading back there tonight. I know the forecast keeps keeps us in the 40s, but I'm telling you, we do cool down and tomorrow it's temps back in the mid 50s with a lot of cloud cover and some scattered showers as we get a bit of convergence here in our atmosphere and a little bit of diurnal heating to really kind of kick things off. It's that combo that makes those showers a little more widespread than where they might be as we get into the day on Saturday, but still Saturday got some lingering moisture. Overnight lows fall back into the 30s across much of the inland northwest. By tomorrow afternoon, we do hit 60 in Spokane, 50s in North Idaho, mid 60s out in central Washington. Jeremy, thank you very much. All right, don't go to bed just yet. Coming up after the break, a second fire in a downtown Spokane apartment in just over a month. Why firefighters say upgrades are urgently needed 
to keep tenants in older buildings safe. We are back in just 90 seconds.